Uh, for most of you, you're familiar with our guest speaker is, uh, is Reverend Peter Lee. He's a dear friend of mine. For those of you who have not heard him before, he's spoken to us about two or three times before. He's a dear friend of mine. We go all the way back to high school years. He's currently uh, in Korea, uh, in Suwon. He is currently working for Dallas Baptist University. He is a uh, vice president of International Student Affairs. He's here. Uh, school is planning to open up an extension, a branch in Korea, and he's here to lay the groundwork. And uh, he's also involved with his church in Suwon, but uh, this weekend he is here in Taejeon for business. And, and uh, when I heard that, I thought it would be great for him to uh, share with us. And, and for those of us who's heard him before, he's blessed us many times. And I have no doubt that he'll bless us again. So as he comes up, let's give him a big round of warm applause to Reverend Peter Lee. Good afternoon. Everyone's doing well. Um, I'm just going to jump right into it. It's good to be here at Inks once again, to be with all of you. And, you know, it's uh, Thanksgiving coming up. And so we have a lot of things to be thankful for. Uh, let's begin. If you guys can open up your Bibles to Matthew chapter 28. We all know this passage very well, I'm sure. It's a great commission passage. Matthew chapter 28. And I'm going to begin from verse 16. But before I begin, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, speak to our hearts today. Amen. This passage alive in our hearts. Open our eyes to see, our ears to hear. Lord, teach us today in your Son's name. Amen. The Word of God reads in Matthew chapter 28, starting from verse 18. The Word of God reads, Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Let me begin a, a fictitious story. Okay, let me make that clear. It's a fiction. And when I heard this story, from one of my professors, Dr. Roy Fish, in my evangelism class, it really opened my eyes to see that, hey, God is at work, and that God is all about, hey, saving lives. He sent his son to die on the cross for you and I, and he uses a wonderful story to just exemplify what Christ has done for us. The story goes, about a few thousand years ago, a beautiful angel named Gabriel, was soaring in the heavenlies, worshiping God, praising Him all the days of His life. But one morning, He glimpsed on the earth and He saw the Son of God being crucified. And something was going on, and it broke His heart. So He quickly descended down on earth, and Jesus was raised after the third day, was ascending up into the heavenlies. The beautiful angel came and saw the nail-pierced hands, the crown of thorns, the pierced side. And he quickly covered Jesus with his wings and said, Son of God, Jesus, what has happened to you? Who has treated you in this manner? And Jesus said, I had been about my father's work to save all mankind from their sins, to give them eternal life, to make a way, a bridge to our God the Father. And in amazement, Gabriel said, Lord Jesus, you've been about this work of salvation to all mankind. And how are you going to go about doing this? What is your plan? And Jesus simply said, my plan is that I have entrusted this work of salvation to my disciples. And in amazement, Gabriel said, Lord Jesus, you have entrusted this wonderful work to 12 misly 
human beings? Are you talking about that Peter, that disciple Peter that not only denied you once, not twice, but three times? Are you talking about that doubting Thomas who doubted you and said, you are not the son of God, where he had to feel your pure side to see that you are real? That doubting Thomas? Are you talking about those 12 human beings like Judas who have denied you? You've got to be kidding. Are you talking about that when you were hung up on the cross, the disciples that ran away and hid? Lord, they cannot be trusted. And Jesus said, let's quickly go to be with the Father, to intercede and to pray for this great work to be done. God has appointed this man to turn this world upside down, to reach the lost. Let us go and pray. It's a fictional story. You all know that. If you look at this wonderful passage in Matthew chapter 28, the passage of the Great Commission, in verse 18, the Word of God says, All authority in heaven and earth. Did you get that? All authority. We saw that wonderful praise we sang just a few minutes ago. It says, the author of salvation. Who is the author of salvation? It is our Lord Jesus Christ. He is the conqueror of the grave. He conquered it all. He is the Son of God. He is the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through Him. Many of you guys have been walking in the Lord. Do you remember the times when you were struggling? Do you remember the times when you were walking in this world? Do you remember when you got on your knees and say, Lord, come into my life? The grace, the mercy that He's shown us. Do you remember the days when you accepted Jesus Christ, when you were walking with the Lord? And you could just really sense God's presence in your life? Remember all the wonderful things that he has done for you and I. We know because, first of all here, the scripture says, all authority heaven on earth has been given to me. Why? Because Jesus, we all know, died on the cross for you and I. He had made that bridge between us and God. In the Old Testament times, uh, we all know, that they would sacrifice animals, the blood sacrifice. But Jesus has become that blood sacrifice for you and I. So that we can go to God directly now. Only through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. So because Jesus took up the cross, he alone has the authority. So here he is, Jesus, gathered his disciples before about to be descended up into heaven, the last remark, he gathers them together and says, all authority in heaven and earth has been given to me because he took up the cross. And only Jesus, not Buddha, Jesus. So, he reminds his disciples that all authority has been given to me because I have risen after the third day. He established himself as a son of God, the only way, the truth. And if you look, the next verse here, look with me, it says, Therefore, meaning I have the authority, I have conquered death, I have risen. Now you can go to God through my sacrifice. So I have the authority, and the scripture says, Therefore, now that I have the authority, therefore, it's like telling my two boys at times, hey, I'm your father. I pay for your clothes. I feed you. I clothe you. I pay for your school. Therefore, you better go and brush your teeth. But in the same line, Jesus said, I have conquered death. I have done everything for you. Therefore, he says what? The scripture says, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, Go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the Father and Son of the Holy Spirit. Go. It's an active verb. God is demanding action from all of us. 
My brother graduated number two at West Point, United States Military Academy. And I remember after he served his five-year commitment, I'm sorry, he was about third year into his commitment, about two more years ago, the desert storm, the war broke out. This was in 19, early 90s. And so he didn't want to go. He was a valiant soldier. He was a first lieutenant. So he had to go. So he went all the way out to Saudi Arabia for a whole year. And we're all heartbroken to see him go. But that was his duty. That was his calling. The Uncle Sam, the U.S. government, said, you must go, so you better go. So he came back. And then him and my uh, sister-in-law, Lisa, were planning to get married, and they had the weddings all set, and they've been preparing for a whole year. Two weeks before they were supposed to have the wedding, Uncle Sam once again said, First Cavalry Division from Fort Hood, the tank division, you must go. Go back once again. So my brother, what could he say? He had to go two weeks before his wedding. So he had to cancel all oh, the catering, thousands of dollars and everything else, and so he had to go. So meaning, guys, Jesus is asking all of us, therefore, go and make disciples of all nations. He is asking all of us, those that are believers, to put our faith in action. To live out our faith. Because, number one, the authority has been given for Jesus Christ to give you that authority. And we're going to see here from this passage later that he also empowers us. He said we will do even greater things than he to reach the lost. As Pastor Paul shared in that video earlier, that there are so many that are lost. That it is up to us valuable human beings that angel Gabriel was so concerned about. The apostle Peter who has denied Jesus not once but three times. The doubting Thomas. The disciples that abandoned Jesus. But all we know is that these disciples, they must have done something right because 2,000 years later there are churches, believers all over the world. God's work is being done, folks. Therefore, go. Put our faith in action. You know, I've been here in Korea for one year now. And like Pastor Paul, I lived in America most of my life. And as much as I love Korea, and I love the Korean people and the food and everything else, but it's been a hard adjustment for me and my family living here in Korea. We're just Americanized. We lived in America all our life. Culturally, we're different. And we don't speak the language very well and everything. And I see my two boys really struggling at school and so forth. As much as we love Korean and Koreans, it's been a struggle for us. Not only that, but it's been a little bit over a year and about a month ago, you know, I'm a good Baptist, so I don't really believe in uh, dreams and so forth. But one, one afternoon, I was taking a, a Sunday afternoon nap. And uh, a, I don't know if it's a kekum or what, a dog dream as we call it. Uh, but all I know is that I fell asleep. And I was kind of half away, half asleep, lying on my couch. And I was reminded of doing this science project that I cooked up in my home when I was 12 years old. You know, we had a lot of frogs in our backyard. And so I remember someone telling me, hey, you could boil the frog to death without him knowing it. I'm thinking, what? And so I did an experiment, my, my brother and I. So we had two pots, one cold pot of water and one boiling. And so we threw the first frog in the boiling water, and that sucker just jumped right out. And the second one, we said, hey, you could kill it wrong at Science Project without him even knowing by slowly turning up the temperature. So we threw the frog in the cold water and so he's swimming in around. Okay, he's having the time of his life. 
Okay? And then you sing it with slowly turn on the temperature. It took us about 10 minutes. And the frog is just having a good old time. We put it on the medium heat, and he's still enjoying himself. So we're like, no way, it's getting kind of warm. So we kind of turn up the medium high, and the frog is still kind of swimming. I could see the little, you know, discomfort in his face, I think, and then he's still swimming around. Then we put it on high, and it's starting to, boy, I know, I know. We shouldn't have done that, right? And, uh, but the, hey, I was 12 years old, I'm sorry. And so the frog is swimming around, and it's boiling. The water is boiling, and the frog is just there and just boiled to death. And I was thinking, you dumb frog. I would have gotten out of there. And I remember having this, like a dream, and I, and I woke up, and all I remember is that the, the, the darnest thing was this frog looked like me. Yeah, I know it's funny. My wife had a good laugh as well. And then something that my wife said that just kind of pierced my heart. She goes, I think you're the frog. And I know what she meant. You know, as a husband and wife, you could really read each other. She really meant that, hey, the one year that you've been here, you've been like this frog where I have been, as Pastor Paul talked about, I've been so busy. I have been so busy with work and everything else that I really sacrificed my relationship with God. I think I've been just slowly just dying spiritually and I'm not even knowing it. I don't even know it's happening. I've heard one of my professors at Southwestern say, if you miss one day with God in your quiet time spending with the Lord, then God will know. If you miss two days, your family will know. And on the third day, everyone else will know. And I realized, man, I have become this frog. I've been so busy, so caught up. You know, I don't spend quiet time with God as much as I should. And I'm doing one of those shotgun prayers in my car. Lord, help me this day. And I'm barely, you know, I don't have time to read, so I'll plug in a scripture uh, with my iPod and we'll listen for about five, ten minutes to a, like a one-minute prayer for my boys before I go to bed. And it's really been like that. And I realized, I think it was the Holy Spirit that was speaking to me. Peter, you are slowly dying spiritually, and you don't even know it. So why am I sharing that? God is saying, go. Go and make disciples. But many times, why is it that I don't go? Look with me real quickly to 1 Corinthians chapter 2. God is talking about three types of people on earth. Okay? And the scripture reads 1 Corinthians Chapter 2, verse 14. The man without the Spirit does not accept the things that come from the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him and cannot understand them because they are spiritually discerned. Meaning, there are the type of people here that don't know Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, so the things of God is foolishness to them. So these are the unbelievers. So we see... The first type of person. Now, the second type of person is this. Verse 15. The spiritual man makes judgment about all things, but he himself is not subject to any man's judgment. For who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. So these are the followers of Christ. Not perfect, but those that are doing our very best to walk with him. To abide in Him. To know Him as our Lord and Savior. These are the believers that are walking with the Lord. Now, the third type. This is me. The Word of God reads in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Chapter 3. Brothers, I could not address you as spiritual, but as worldly. Mere infants in Christ. 
I gave you milk, not solid food, for you were not yet ready for it. Indeed, you are still not ready. You are still worldly. So we see the three types of people on this earth. We see those that are unbelievers that don't know God. We see those that are abiding in Christ, walking with Him. Not perfect, but walking with Him. Genuinely, trying to do our very best. And then three, those are those that are the carnal Christians. Those that are in the world. This is not a time for a guilt trip whatsoever. But it's a time for us to just really re-examine our faith. To walk with God. And the scripture says in Matthew chapter 28, to go and make disciples of all nations. How come we're not going? Because maybe, number one, you don't know Christ yet. That you are seeking, but you don't have a personal relationship with Him. Or number two, possibly, you have been walking with God. But as we term it in a Christian way, maybe you are backsliding. Maybe you have fallen away from the Lord. Maybe you have allowed the world to really catch up with you. Maybe you, like me, you have been so busy that Jesus is not the numero uno, the number one in your life. But he is second at best. So maybe those are the reasons why we're not fulfilling the Great Commission. Maybe that is the reason why the gospel is not reaching the four corners of the world. Maybe God is calling many of us to go and reach the lost. But maybe we are not responding because our hearts are not ready. Maybe we know the truth, we know the commands. But for some reason, we have allowed things of this world to cloud our thoughts and our minds. You ever ask, why would God bring some of us clear across from the other side of the world here to Korea? I ask myself that all the time. As wonderful as Korea is, don't get me wrong, but why would God bring me from living in America all the way down to Korea? Even some of you Koreans here, I know one thing about Ang Church is this, is that you guys do such a wonderful job of outreach, doing the work of the Great Commission, not only going to the world, but the really reaching out to those foreigners that are here in this Taejeon area. God is bringing the people to you, and you are bringing those people to the church. And I know God is very pleased with the work that you are doing here. But at the same time, you wonder, could we do more? As body of believers here, could we step up to really be part of what God wants to do through Inc. To go and make disciples of all nations. Or just you as a child of God. Maybe where you might be working, teaching, in your workplaces, in your company, God wants to use you. But before you can be used by God, we need to come to realization. Where are we in the Lord? Are we in the world? Are we a carnal Christian? Or are we really abiding in Christ? We must resolve that first. And that's between you and God and God alone. Between you and God. And that time that Pastor Paul spoke about. At the time of solitude, to really reflect upon your own heart and say, God, I've been here in Korea for six months or a year or a few years. Have I lost my purpose? Have I lost my vision? To really abide in you, to bring forth the Great Commission. Let me close with this. If you look back with me at Matthew chapter 28, the Word of God reads. Once again, all authority in heaven on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. You know, I really enjoy it when I go preaching at times and when my wife is not here. You know, because for some reason when my wife is not here, I have a little bit more authority to really preach what I want to preach. But when my wife is here, I know she sees right through me. 
She knows the things that I'm not doing well. And so I have less authority. My wife is not here today, so I'm being bold. It says here, teaching them to obey everything. Maybe we're not going because maybe because our relationship with God is not there. Because our relationship with God is not there, we can't teach everything. I'll tell you a lot of times, I want to instruct my boys in the ways of the Lord and to really lead my wife in a godly way. Because, but because I myself at times are not walking with God, I don't have no authority to really teach my boys, especially my wife, to wash her, cleanse her as my bride of Christ, as Ephesians chapter 4 shares. I lose my authority. So maybe that's the reason why we're not going. Maybe we're not able to share with our co-workers, those unbelievers, because we don't have that authority. When we examine our lives, there's too many things that are going wrong. So we lose that authority. But here's a great news. Jesus said, if you confess your sins, I am faithful and just to forgive you of all of your sins. God knows that we like the doubting Thomas. God knows that we like Peter. That we will, not, we will deny Jesus not once, twice, or three times. That's why Jesus came to die on the cross for you and I. Because he knows that we're going to blow it. He knows that we are imperfect human beings. God wants you to get right with him. Not only so that you can fulfill the great commission, but mainly because he just loves you. He died on the cross for only you. And famous theologian Augustine said, if you are the only one on this earth, God will send his son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross just for you. That's the love of Christ. Love of God. I'm not sure where you are in your walk with God. But I encourage you this day, this week, to come before Him just as you are. He loves you. To get right with God. To walk with Him. To dine with Him. For that is the right thing to do. Let's pray. Jesus said, We will do greater things than these. Jesus has commanded all believers in Matthew chapter 28 to go and make disciples of all nations. But we know that we're at times that we are like Peter and the doubting Thomas, and like the disciples that have scattered when the moment where they counted. Lord, we could really relate to the disciples at that very moment. We could relate to Thomas when we doubt about our faith at times, the times when we deny God. But Lord, you have counted all these things. You know all these things. That's the reason why you died on the cross for all of us. I would like to make a one invitation today. An invitation for those believers that have fallen away from the Lord. Only you know and God knows. But as the Spirit leads in your own heart, not by my words, but by the power of the Holy Spirit that is working in your heart. If there's any believers here that would like to get right with God, to know Him more, to desire Him more, and say, God, I want to walk with you. I want to abide in you once again. If that is your decision, we simply just pray at this time. This is between you and God and God alone, no one else. To simply, silently pray in your heart. Say, God, come into my life. Or maybe your heart is so hardened that the prayer that you want to make at this point is, Lord, just change my heart. My heart is so hardened. My mind is not in the things of you. But Lord, change my heart that I may draw near, closer to Thee. If that is your prayer, will you speak with God this morning? It's between you and God and God alone. Lord, I pray that you will seal the commitments that have been made this afternoon. 
that you will work in the hearts of your people. We know that you have given us the authority to do greater things that you desire for us to go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and Son and the Holy Spirit. Lord, our desire is to do that. But many times, oh God, we fall short. Whatever the reason, God, we give to you this day, help us to have the mind of Christ. Do the things of you. In your son's name we pray. Amen.